Right. Okay, well, good day everyone. We're here at Arena Essex for the Cortina Classic and we're starting off with number one, Martin Steenbeckers. Did I pronounce that right, Martin? Yeah, that's right. That's the right name. Now, you've come from a long way away to race this entire weekend. Where have you come from? Yeah, we went uh, Friday to Hook van Holland to Harwich. Uh, we, we go on Saturday morning to Kings Lynn, have a race yesterday with this Austin Oh, with this, so what was this then? Yeah, it was an Austin Princess of 63, but it isn't anymore, I think. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I don't know if the camera can get the back of it, but it looks like you, you, you had an enjoyable time. Um, did you manage to do many races last night? Yeah, I went out three times, but I couldn't expect a lot of these guys, all wooden and alu, so uh, it is not strong, but had fun, broke the steer and go backwards and forwards and make some, uh, some mess and enjoy myself, so it's good. Brilliant. And I noticed that around there, there looks like a hastily prepared Cortina for today. Yeah, it is. I have to prepare two cars and there was the, uh, the first one and the second one is always too short in time. And yeah, we're going to fix it today and come out a few eats, maybe. Maybe one, maybe two, don't know. If I can hit something, it's good for me and we will see. Well, I tell you what, you, uh, the people in England, they really appreciate the fact that yourself make the effort to come all the way over from Holland and, and some of the other European drivers as well. How long can you carry on doing this, Martin? Um, this Christmas I do it 10 years now and uh, I don't know, I'm 31 now and I think I can go uh, a further 10 years or something, don't know, but you will see me more over here, I think. <laughs> well, I hope so. I remember you at Firecracker, you always put on a show. Are you going to do Firecracker 25 this year? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Bring out a good yank. Last year I had a Volvo, but I didn't like Volvos. So I take a good yank for this year. And I heard about it. It's a 25, a special one. So I will bring a special car for you. And marvelous. The, oh, and the rest of the people. So uh, we're going to enjoy it, I think. Oh, well, that's marvelous. Well, thanks very much, Martin. And I hope you get a few laps in today. The very best of luck. Thank you. Well, uh, OK, here we are now uh, with someone who's not racing today, but his little boy is. It's former Bangor World Champion Tony Wade. Hello, Tony. Now, just tell everybody, when you won the Bangor Ford Final, what car were you driving? Uh, it was actually a Cortina. I know, that's why I asked the question. First, I, think. I think it was one of the first to win the World Final. Absolutely. I think it was the first, yeah. if I remember correctly. And uh, a, a brilliant day that was as well. Many Cortinas you've, you've smashed a bit since. Many, many. More than I'd like to uh, remember now. Yeah, it's been uh, put a few in the grave now. And what about uh, Danny having a go today? Because he's getting sort of on a bit now, isn't he? He must be at least, what, 30 now? He's uh, 34 now, yeah, and uh, well, he couldn't miss this one. Uh, he's always wanted to do one of these meetings, so it was his turn. I've done the Granada meeting, he does a cool team to me. As much as I'd like to have done it, it's uh, just work commitments and one thing or another, it's uh, his turn now. Well, we, uh, the Granada meeting you mentioned, of course, that is an iconic picture from that. And you're on the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it made my day. That was a good uh, send-off for me. Um, that done it for me. That uh, was my closure. So, uh, yeah, it was a good day for me. Well, of course, all the action captured by Impact Videos today, and I know that they got that crash perfect. And actually, that's on your on their picture as well. I'm talking to the guy behind the camera now. But yeah. it, it, it was a moment. I did feel a bit for Brian, though. Uh, I did for about a second, but uh, yellow's yellow. Whoever's behind the wheel is a yellow. So... Uh, yeah, yeah it, took, it was a case of uh, do them before they do me, so it was perfect. Yes, and as it turned out, do them and then get done by them. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly that. I was expecting it. I would have been upset if Chris had, Chrissy hadn't come in uh, when, uh, as a sitting duck. I, I expected him to, to come in. Oh, marvellous. Now then, uh, back in the day, your Cortinas, they used to go very well. Have you shared any of your secrets with Danny for today? Uh, he pretty much knows everything. He... he uh, he used to take note of everything we used to do, uh, good and bad. So, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's built it properly. Right, can we expect him to do well then? 733, by the way, Tony's little boy uh, today. If they let him out, yeah, he should do well today, yeah. So passing scrutiny is the first challenge? Uh, well, he's already failed once, so, um, <laughs> um, so we'll see if they let him out or not. Well, let's hope he can fix it. All right, and thanks a lot, Tony. Nice to see you again. OK. Uh, we move from one of the old lags of Bangor Racing to one of the young guns, and it's uh, Tom Waller. Uh, hello, Tom. Now, you've got a car here that looks even older than Tony Wade to race today. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. So tell us the story of this car. Um, I wasn't going to do it. I tried cancelling because I couldn't get a car. And uh, Shane Davis knew I needed a car. He rang me, said he's got one. 
he wanted to do it himself, but he said, if I need it, I'll buy it. But then I saw the state of it, oh my God. So it's, um, I see you've, uh, you've tried to repair some bits, but there's a hell of a lot of rust on this thing. Uh, what, what's your prediction for today, Tom? Uh, just have some fun, that's all. I'm not going to get a lot out of it, I don't think. Just have a good crash, maybe. I don't, it's not going to be fast. I'll be quicker in a boat. <laughs> all right, then. Well, very good luck, Tom. Uh, all the best today. Thank you. Uh, OK, then, folks. Well, we're now uh, over to the Whiteman part of the pit area, and I've got another former Bangor World Champion, Dennis Whiteman, with me. He's keeping his hat on. Why are you keeping your hat on, Dennis? Because it's got G&I on it. Indeed, well done. Good bit there for the uh, for the company. Now, uh, has uh, has Paul taken that in for scrutineering yet? Yeah, we went straight through, passed straight away, like a uh, normal uh, Whiteman car. No, no issues at all at scrutineering. Right, and so now, why are they removing bits? Uh, we're just taking a bit of the rust out. We found a bit more rust, and we're just going to cut a bit of rust out now. Oh, I love it. You're still full of it, aren't you? OK, but what about today, though, all these cortinas? Have you had a walk around yet? Yeah, I've had a walk around. There's some good cars here. There's some good preparation. There's a little bit of over prep, but, uh, you know, you always get that these days with the uh, bangers. Yeah. But uh, I think in general, everyone's in a good mood. A bit like the Ganada meeting. We're here for fun. It's putting a big show for the crowd, really, and I hope everyone will remember what it used to be like when I raced many years ago. Well, I do remember you in a cortina. My favourite memory, I think, was... Uh, when we uh, arranged that team race thing against Camelot organisation. Do you remember that? But you wrote on the side of your car, Camelot, but um, can you remember that day? No. <laughs> really? Really? Camelot. Is that the uh, off-road and the bikes and the... Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we built two cool teeners. Uh, the boys had a uh, four before like off-road purpose-built machine and a, like, a tank machine. And uh, me and Steve Taylor, we... Uh, took them on and uh, we beat them. They thought they was the bee's knees and uh, they come to uh, give us a show how it should be done and at the end of the day we showed them how it should be done. Well, it was it was fantastic fun anyway. I seem to remember the gear stick coming off in your hand when you were trying to find reverse at one point. Yeah, it's all part of our techniques. You, you know, you build up a big, uh, build up a big false uh, sense of security to the other drivers. They, they think you've got no gears and when they come to get you, you have got gears. Well, I'll tell you what, you, you've moved through the gears very nicely there, Dennis. Thank well you. done. It's been a pleasure. Have a good day today. Thank you. Okay, folks. Well, uh, we've seen some of the ba uh, legends of banger racing. Now we've got one of the current legends. Oh, I think that's not uh, unjust to call this man that. Pikey, Steve Bailey. Welcome back to Arena, Steve. It seems like every time you come here, we get to have a little chat and you put on a show. Don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Well, today... Massive effort again from you coming up from the West Country. What time did you leave this morning? Uh, five o'clock, believe it or not, because I had to go and pick that horrible car behind me up, so it wasn't too bad. OK, then. And uh, today, then, uh, what made you decide to have a go at the Cortina meeting today? Because I know you've done a number of the big meetings here, but the Cortina's today. Well, to be fair, it's charity for one. And uh, obviously, this is where I, what I started in. Old rotten old pieces of Cortina. So, I haven't raced one for a long time, I thought I could do it again, so it's mainly the reason why, really. Yeah, I think, I think it's good for people like yourself as well. We were talking to Martin Steenbeckers earlier, who's come from Holland, for, for the fans to realise what an incredible effort it is on the day of racing, but also through the week as well, getting the cars ready. Yeah, well, believe it or not, I didn't pick this car up until Tuesday night, so that's when I started building it. But, like you say, it's all, it's all why you do it. It's, for the adrenaline, for the buzz, for charity, for whatever reason it is, it don't make no difference. You're here and you're enjoying yourself, so it don't matter. Well, you've certainly made your name on it and uh, looking forward to another good show today. Thank have, you very a, much. have a great day and a safe journey home tonight. Yeah, no worries. Cheers. Right. right then, folks. Well, now, how about this? Just behind this young man is one of the smartest cars here today. The young man is yet another former Bangor World Champion. This time it's 415 Scott Cornish. Hello, Scott. Hello, mate. You're beaming. Um, looks like a lot of effort gone into this car. Hell of a lot of work. Tell us about it. Well, I bought it off some old boy who restores classic cars, but it was too far gone for him. Then I got it in about March time. Wow. And then probably for the last month, every night after work and every spare day I've had, I've been working on it, trying to get it ready. And uh, what do you, I mean, it, 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 it looks fantastic. It looks fantastic. Is it going to go? Hopefully, in a, a go in someone's boot. <laughs> I had a look at the boot on this, and like all Cortinas at the back, it, it looks as though it's ready to fold. 
Yeah, that'll fold up next to me headrest. <laughs> okay, so what's your prediction for today? I mean, what inspires you to do a meeting like this today? They're one-off cars. I grew up watching my dad and people like that racing these, so something different. Yeah, that's that's certainly where I, where I am with this, seeing the A60s and then going into the Cortinas. It was a classic time when, when that change was made, so it is fantastic. Uh, and uh, what an effort. You said you started in March. Uh, any others around here that you'd like to tip us off to we can go and have a look at? Um, yeah, Georgie Lee started his a while back as well. Yeah, we saw him um, uh, cutting the roof off, it seemed, over there just yeah. now. Yeah, we've been made to cut the roof plates down. but What's all that about then? Uh, they're saying they're only allowed to finish a few inches behind your roll cage. So is it? To, it's a strengthening argument then? It's not so much strengthening, it's just trying to make your car bend better. Oh right, OK. Well, um, sadly, I think they all are going to bend, aren't they, by the end of today. Are you looking to use it again or just have a glorious finish today? No, nah, smash it straight up. Fantastic. All right, and Scott, good luck, mate. Good luck, mate. OK then, folks. Well, we've been uh, talking to a few people that could lay claim to being legends in the world of banger racing. Here's a fella that I first watched race when he was 10. Um, I have to say he was crap then, but he is fantastic now. Of course, Jason Jackson, Boxer Jack. All right, Jason. So, you have managed to find one for today. Tell us about the car. Yeah, I found it was hard, obviously hard to find. Didn't have none in the yard, but it was a bit rotten. So, But most of them are now, so you just got to bear with it. But it's all right when you're against all the old cars. It's pretty good, do you know what I mean? It, yeah, definitely. It's a real buzz for all of us. And, of course, when you were starting out um, as, a, as a little boy, uh, all in those hours, I'm trying to think. I think Cortinas were probably the thing to have, or maybe Granadas had just started to come in then. No, we obviously when I was racing, we had a team race. Was, that's what we had all the time when you was thinking we had Cortinas, and obviously that was good then. But it's no good if obviously you now you got a Cortina against a Mondo or something or whatever it is. You got to have the old stuff against the old stuff. Absolutely right. Okay then. Well, um, I, I'm I'm thinking back now. You've you've done so much racing over the years, given so much pleasure all over the country. Um, I was at uh, Brandon last month, uh, Coventry. Yeah. And I'm watching and I see Georgie Lee and Boxer Jack coming out to race. Yeah, I mean, obviously I've done many years, as you know, over here. And it's just, I, I lost a bit of enthusiasm over here because obviously I've done what I wanted to do. So I started racing everywhere else. And obviously I enjoy it because it's always a task to go and win somewhere else. Well, it's a fantastic shell track and you may know that uh, it's faces closure this year. So every meeting's been a big meeting uh, each month there at Coventry. Um, when you were on, the, the, the main state formula is, of course, Formula One stock cars. Did you get a chance to watch any of that while you, were, while you were there? No, I didn't. Normally, I do like to have a little watch of them, but obviously, I was messing around with the car, so I didn't get a chance to watch them. Well, it was a funny day, because you crossed the line first in the final, you drove a blinding race, took the lead just before the end, and they gave it to Jack Overy, um, and, if, and he, didn't, he, he knew he hadn't won it. But what happened in the end? Well, it's just obviously when you're racing, you know what position you're in. Well, I do, you know what I mean? You know if you want to race or where you are. But obviously they said, oh, you use a lap down. I knew I didn't, but obviously oh, he, he knew I weren't. But obviously they see it in the end and then they give it to me. Yeah, well, that was good. It was good to see, although they didn't make a fuss about it. And although sometimes I think uh, the commentary teams there are a little bit, uh, how can I put it, patronising towards the banger drivers compared to the Formula One drivers, the Formula One fans you'd be surprised how many of them know about you. Um, and the question they always ask me is, wouldn't it be great, do you know if, what about Boxer Jack in a Formula One stock car? Oh, listen, I've always watched, I've tried, as you know, I've tried many non-contact formulas and other contact formulas. I've never really got the same buzz as a banger, but it is something I would like to have a go of, just to have a go and say if you liked it or not liked it, do you know what I mean? But I would like to have a go of it, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, please let me know when you do, because I'm there. I think Jack Overy had a go, actually, towards the end of last season, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, I think Jack Overy's had a go, and I think Ricky Finney's had a go in them. But obviously, it's a, like everyone thinks, you know, you can drive, if someone can drive a car, you drive a car, but them sort of cars, you don't just get in and drive it and be, like, outstanding, do you know what I mean? But it comes to you. If you stick with it, it sticks with it. If you don't, you don't. That's it. Well, I always remember something John King said to me. Is John King... In your memory? No. Is that before you? Oh my goodness, <laughs> going back a long time now, John King. But he said that when you're driving a banger, uh, the car changes, you know, you get a little knock and it'll change the handling, uh, the track conditions change and so on. 
Um, if you can drive a banger well, then you can drive anything. Because, of course, all these other formulas, the racing form, they're set up as racing. Even the Formula One stock cars are racing cars, even though they, they put the hits in. Yeah, yeah that, that's very true. Do you know what I mean? When you're racing a banger, the, the track goes off. You know, you can have a car, and the, the first half of the race, that car's like rapid. You think, oh, this is good. Then all of a sudden, halfway through, it goes off. But that's because the track always changes with a banger. Any non-contact formula never likes going out after bangers have been out because they kill the track. Do you know what I mean? So, but I still think you know it's, it takes a lot to drive a banger and obviously get it around. If like if you got in one and fall in one, you'd have to be have a learner of it to drive it. Do you know what I mean? You can't just go and get insane and drive it because you've drove one of them. But you know, I think I'd give it a good go. I, I think you would. I think you'd be tremendous, and I look forward to it. All the best today, Jason. And uh, yeah, have a good. Bang it a banger. Thank you.